Commissioner. You sent for me? Steve, I've got a present for you. Hmm. White feather. I'm supposed to be a coward now, or Commissioner. Turn it over. Blood stain on it. Yes, the symbol of the most ruthless and dangerous secret society we've ever been up against. Yeah, the Order of the Sacred Dove. They always slip one of these to a guy before they kill him. Now you're giving it to me? No, I'm not giving it to you, Steve. I'm keeping it. I just hope you don't get another one when you get over there. Oh, swell. Your plane leaves for Cairo in one hour. You mean I'm supposed to waltz over there and tag a bunch of killers that nobody's ever lived to describe? Steve, at last we have a lead on them. What kind of a lead? Our old friend Lenaka sends word that he has a proposition for us. Lenarchus, now wait a minute. Check in at Shepherd's Hotel, then wait in the bar. You'll be contacted by someone who'll tell you the Nile is beautiful in the moonlight. Right. Get over there, Steve. Find out what Lenarchus' proposition is. Get all the information you can from him, and then stamp out this order of the sacred dove once and for all. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. I've got my assignment, a real dandy one. Fly over to Egypt and round up a secret society quaintly called the Order of the Sacred Dove. A society of cutthroats who've been terrorizing the entire Middle East. Knowing the way they operate, I've got an uneasy hunch that while I'm trying to put them out of business, they'll be just as eager to do likewise to me. In Paris, I get a cablegram from the commissioner saying that George Arthur will fly to Cairo with me. George is one of our best agents and one of my best friends. His specialty is international relations. So I know that somehow there's been a new development in the case of the sacred dove. The commissioner thought you'd like to know what's going on and he didn't feel he should entrust it to writing. The has been cutting up again? You can call it that. He's on to something big. You talked to him? Yes, or uh, rather I listened to him. He refused to give any information until we agreed that one of our agents would be sent in from the States. What could we do that one of you guys couldn't? Stumps me. But does he know I'm the pigeon? Yes. How'd he take the news? He was delighted, and that's why I don't like it. Steve, whatever he's up to, we can't cover you. Anarchus is pretty smart. He'd get wise to it in a minute. I've heard that before. What's new? The entire Middle East is on a powder keg. There's something gigantic going on. If this is bungled, Steve, well, the explosion could be heard around the world. That's news? No. I've been stalling. Now I'll give it to you straight. Shoot. Since you left Washington, the lid has popped off. If there are any slip-ups, you're on your own. On my own? One mistake and we never heard of you. Sorry, Steve, but that's the way it is. Oh, great. We get to Cairo Wednesday. George Arthur disappears without a word or a nod. I do the usual things, check my bags, grab a cab, and start across town. The surface looks peaceful. Little groups of people are standing around as they do in every city. Others walk or run, pretty much the same as usual. But there's a feeling of tension everywhere. It lessens a little after I check into my hotel and make my way to the bar. An Egyptian drink, sir? Yeah. Fascinating place, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Be a lot more fascinating if Cleopatra would have suddenly walked in the door, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, that would stir up a few things, I guess. But she's not likely to, old boy, dead, you know. Oh, no, that's where you're quite wrong. At least she isn't dead in my book. Oh, I guess I haven't read that. I'd be most surprised if you had. You see, it isn't written yet. Oh. I really should introduce myself. Reginald Weathersby. Steve Mitchell. How do you do? I see my name doesn't mean much to you. Should it? Well, I'm a writer. I dash off fantasies. Fantasies? Oh, then you weren't kidding about Cleopatra. Mm, indeed not. That's my new novel. I'm here getting color for it now. Cleopatra in modern Egypt. Imagine the old girl sitting on a stool right here in Shepherd's Bar. Fascinating, what? I don't see how you can miss the bestseller lists. You really think so, old boy? Oh, I am Ali, the most wonderful guide for to guide you around the city of Cairo. I will show you the mysterious places and the bazaars. Good evening, sir. I would be most happy for to guide you around Cairo. No, thanks. I will show you places that you will not believe, sir. I don't doubt it, but thank you. No, thanks. I also happen to have with me several artistic postcards, which I will let you have very cheap. Will you get lost? Very well, sir. Oh, I am Ali. I will show you the city 
and the river Nile. It is most beautiful in the moonlight. I will show this you. This is the beggars, aren't they? Yeah. The uh, excuse me. I'll see you later. Goodbye, old boy. You are interested in the Nile by moonlight, sir? Yeah. So you're my contact, huh? Oh, Cookie say tell Mitchell, come on to my house. Who's Cookie? You will see. Here are directions to find it. Cookie's note says she lives in the alley of the Seven Donkeys, which can be reached by taking the Giza streetcar. After two go by, I decide to walk. Honey, pull up a pillow. Are uh, you Cookie? That's right, Cookie Gamovich. Look, I got for you nice fruit. See, grapes and dates. <laughs> Even a pomegranate, eh? <laughs> Anything you like. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, it's good here. You want to talk to the knuckles, don't you, honey? Yeah. You don't look much like him. <laughs> Isn't he cute? <laughs> well, I wouldn't exactly say that. You're cute too, honey. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> honey. Let's quit stalling. Oh, you sure you don't want some little grapes here? I'm sure I don't want some little grapes here. <laughs> so he don't want grapes? Don't give him grapes. Lenakos. My old and dear friend, Steve Mitchell. Oh, save the guff. It is always such a pleasure to see you, but it does not seem to be the same with you. Such a pity. Yeah, isn't it? All right, what's your proposition? I will tell you. You want some grapes? Thank you, Cookie. All right, honey. <coughs> the seven leaders of the Order of the Sacred Dove are to meet within the next 24 hours. Where? Not so fast. First, my proposition. All right, what is it? It just happens that at the moment I am involved in a little unpleasant situation with the local government. This is something new. I am entirely innocent in the matter, of course. Of course. You will intercede on my behalf. If the charges against me are dropped, the information on their place of meeting is yours. You know very well that we never interfere at the internal affairs of other countries. For something as important as this. That's exactly why I'm here, because it is important. But if you think... At least you can communicate my proposition to your commissioner. That's what I intend to do, but I can tell you what his answer will be right now. One never knows. In the meantime, prepare to fly to Athens. The meeting is there. Athens? I thought this outfit was made up of a bunch of Middle Eastern fanatics. It is an organization for hire, made up of Middle Easterners and Europeans. Yeah, but who... Uh, 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 no more until we hear about my proposition. Come, I will drive you to my apartment. There you can telephone your commissioner, eh? Cookie, darling. Cookie, thank you. Right this way, please. Come on, Cookie. Oh! Grapes for your trip. Lenakos and I weave in and out of alleys, circle blocks, and from the look on his face, I know he has a healthy respect for the order of the sacred dove. Finally, satisfied, he drives into an apartment garage and we go up to his room. What are you doing? I want to be sure no one followed us. It was back street you came. Nobody could follow us. Where the order of the sacred dove is concerned, the slightest misstep on my part may seriously interfere with my lifelong ambition. What's that? To be a rich old man. The telephone? Operator? Excuse me, Mr. Mitchell. When I finally come out of it, I realize I've been unconscious for almost two hours. My neck feels like it's in about five assorted pieces. Lanakos is nowhere in sight. 
This I don't get. Why did he clobber me, and where is he? It doesn't add up. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good one. It reminds me of the story of the fellow who went into an antique shop to buy a grandfather. Mitchell. Steve Mitchell. Huh? It's really you. <laughs> Is that a discovery? But you're dead. I'm dead? Yes, it was all over the bar not half an hour ago. You'd been found dead in an alley nearby. I'd been found dead? Hey, wait a minute. Oh, this calls for a splash or something. It's not every day I get to buy a drink for a man who's dead, you know. I'll take a rain check on it. Right now I'm going to pay a call on an old friend of mine. Ah, it is good to see you, Steve. It's been a long time, Lieutenant Abura. I was expecting a visit from you. You were reported dead in an alley an hour ago. Yeah, that's what I came to see you about. Whose body was it? A man we have been seeking for some time. His name was Linakos. Linakos? This was found in his hand. <laughs> the Dove boys got him, huh? Yes, as you know, one of these is given to each of their prospective victims. Yeah. I still don't see why anyone should think Lenakos was me, though, unless he's the boy that lifted my credentials. He was. Oh. <laughs> he must have gotten them while I was unconscious. Is there anything else missing? Not so far. I've been... Why the Order of the Sacred Dove wishes to kill you? <laughs> That's not so tough. They found out somehow I was trying to round them up. I mean about Lenakos. I think he was trying to use me or my credentials. You said you were after him. Yes, uh, my government wanted him for the theft of certain military secrets. Hmm. It's a cinch Lenakos knew that this secret society has been in our hair for some time, so he made a phony pitch to us to get an agent, namely me, to come over here. I see. He stole your credentials, intending to use them to get out of the country. Yeah, but the Order of the Sacred Dove caught up with him. That means to me he did have some information on them. They found out about it. Yes. And now they know about you. I strongly urge you to drop this investigation. If I could only find out the information on Lanako's head on him, their place of meeting and... Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Where are you going? Gonna nibble on some grapes. Of course. Grapes? For breakfast? Oh, hello, honey. <laughs> Bet you haven't moved the muscle since I left. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you want a pomegranate? What? No grapes, honey? Last time you were here, you say something about pomegranates, so I get some. And then next time you come, I say I give them to you. <laughs> you can't keep away from Cookie, huh? No, you're irresistible, oh, I guess. That's nice. Why well, you don't come here? I need some answers from you, Cookie. Well, I give you answers. Anything. Your friend Lenakos is dead, or do you know that, maybe? Yeah, I hear about that this morning. It's nice, that Greek. It's too bad. Some of his ideas was crazy, but it's nice. Lenarchus was using me to get my credentials so he could leave the country, right? That's what he was up to, honey. And I said it's no harm, as nobody gets hurt. Where was he going? I was going to meet him in Athens. You? Well, sure. I got money to burn. And Lenarchus, he liked money. Oh, you don't want a pomegranate, honey? You don't like oh, it? Oh, later, maybe. Uh, what were some of Lenarchus's other crazy ideas? Oh, to blackmail the secret society. I tell him Lenarchos is no good. Then he did have information on him. Oh, honey, why all this talk, 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 when you could be eating? I only knew where in Athens that meeting was taking place. It's not in Athens. 
is here in Cairo. Where in Cairo? Hmm? And Arcos didn't say. Just here in Cairo. He did that to keep you guessing. Great. Ah, well, thanks for the information, Cookie. Even though I'm not any further along than I was. Oh, don't go yet. We have to get good and acquainted. <laughs> I guess that just wasn't meant to be, Cookie. <coughs> well, you never know until you try. <laughs> oh, don't bother. I can find my way out of here. You come back and see me later, honey? Yeah, much later, honey. Well, guess I can quit looking for the order to the sacred dove. Looks like they found me. Watch the front door. Cookie, got something to tie this guy up? Steve, honey, the man at the front's gone round to the back. Get out of sight. Took care of Mitchell's honey? Good. Now we must hurry. The meeting is about to start. Come. I'm feeling slightly like a goldfish in a shark's nest, but at least I've located the order of the sacred dove. Now I've got to slip away and phone the location to Lieutenant Aburab. I will tell the leader we are here. Then my luck runs out. Cut it! Why did you leave me? What do you know? Weathersby. So you're my boy. I underestimated you, Mitchell. I never thought you'd get this far. Cut him! Cut him! What is it? Mitchell has taken my robe. He came to the meeting. He's somewhere in this house. Mitchell, kill him when you find him. Hurry! Oh, Hurry! Hurry up! So you're the leader of this cute little outfit, huh? That's right. That explains how I got my blood-stained feather. You stuck it into my pocket in the bar. Yes. I'm afraid you walked into a trap, old boy. You'll never get out alive. You'll have to prove that to me. With pleasure. That'll be one of my guards. Better give me the gun. Guess again. 
Mr. Weathersby, are you all right? Tell him yes. Yes, I'm quite all right. Well, what now, Mitchell? One gun will never get you out of here. I could use you as a hostage. Oh, you'd never get away with it. Is Mitchell in there with you? Tell him yes, that you'll bring me down to the meeting yourself. Yes, Cadet, he's here, but everything's all right. I'll take care of him myself. May I open the door and see for myself? <laughs> I think that does it, Mitchell. Come on, you better give me that gun. Weathersby, you said a little while ago that one gun would never get me out of here. Maybe you're right. Now you're talking good sense. But two guns will. Here. Point that gun at me. Tell him to open the door. And if you want to go on living, you better make it look good. You're bluffing. Yeah, call him a bluff. You don't have another gun. You can find out any time. Go ahead and make up your mind. Uh, I... Point that gun at me, Weathersby, and it better be convincing. If any of those monkeys give me any trouble, you're a dead dove. Come in. See, everything's under control. Go back to your post. Do as I say. Thanks. Couldn't have done better myself. Lock the door. You didn't have another gun. You were bluffing. Yeah, too bad you didn't call. Operator, get me Lieutenant Abora of the police department. Abora, Mitchell, I finally located their headquarters. It's about eight blocks from you on the Gazay Road. It's a big building, looks something like a temple. I know the building. I will be there in five minutes. I'll make it three. Okay, Mr. Weatherby. Now we'll just sit here comfortably until Lieutenant Abora gets here. Mitchell, hmm? did you see this wooden plaque? Yeah. Watch. You can drop the gun, Mr. Mitchell, or get the next knife in your back. Make your own choice. But either way, you lose. Well, Mr. Mitchell? I've made my choice, Weathersby. Well? Weathersby? You've lost. For a moment, I thought you were a dove. For a moment, I felt like a clay pigeon. Well, that's about it, Commissioner. Lieutenant Abura and his men uh, arrived just in the nick of time. Couldn't have been any nickier, believe me. And the entire order of the sacred dove is out of business, huh? Well, in jail, or dead. Good work. Now, get back as soon as... Look, Commissioner, have a heart, will you? I need a little rest. I've been on the jump. All right, Steve. You can have three days. Hello, honey. <laughs> Come out of my house. You know what I got for you? Persimmons. <laughs> Steve, what's going on there? Oh, nothing, Commissioner. I'll be on the afternoon plane. I just had the shortest three-day vacation in history.